This is the Bible in Fewer Words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 3A, Genesis, chapters 9 through 11. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. The flood is over. Yes, it is. Yeah, and Noah sacrificed some animals. Made a little sweet savor for the Lord. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Chapter 9, verse 1. God blessed Noah and his sons and said, Have lots of children. All the animals will be afraid of you. Do whatever you want with them. Eat any living thing that moves, along with all the plants. But don't eat blood. Whoever kills a man must be killed by a man, because men are made in God's image. All right, there's several things I don't quite get here. <laughs> okay. Do whatever you want with the animals. Yeah. I, they're doing that pretty much right now, aren't they? Killing him for God. You know, it's not clear what communication God had with Adam mm-hmm. about killing animals. Mm-hmm. The tradition of sacrificing animals started really early, right? Yeah. We can understand how Noah might have got the idea, because it's probably an established tradition to sacrifice animals to God. So he did that. But God is telling him now you could do anything to any of the animals. Yeah, and that's the one that's really damaging. Yes. That's the one that tells people, because he's not just talking here to Noah. He's talking to all of Noah's descendants, right? He's talking to us, I guess. Yeah, he's talking to my brother. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and so it's telling people that they can do what they want, that the animals are yours to do whatever you want with. Mm -hmm. And that's um, not a very good attitude. And then he's talking about what we can eat. And before, when God created Adam and they were in the Garden of Eden, he told them to eat plants. So apparently they were vegetarians, even vegans at the time. Mm-hmm. Now they can eat anything. But no blood. Don't eat blood. You know, I kind of like blood sausage. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Well, I, it's not clear to me. When you eat uh, rare meat, there's some blood. Mm-hmm. It's not clear what that refers to. Yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that getting a blood transfusion is not eating okay. blood. Yeah. So that's where that comes from. And there's that thing about it, if you kill a man, you have to be killed by a man because men look like God, I guess. And God kills men? Because men are made in God's image, which is what that really means, mm-hmm. is that men are made, men and women maybe, are made... Who knows? Yeah. Are made to look like God yeah. in, in God's image. And because they look like God, then you have to kill God. any man who kills another man because that man looked like God. I think you should just stop there. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) All right. Verse 8. God said to Noah and his sons, I am making a promise to you, your descendants and all the beasts of the earth. I promise to never again kill every living thing in a flood. Yeah. He's got some of that guilt going on again. (laughs) Yeah. And here's the token of my promise. I will set a rainbow in the clouds. When I see it, It'll remind me of my promise not to destroy all living things in a flood. Oh, my gosh. You know how you make little notes to yourself? Yeah, post-it notes. (laughs) Yeah. There's a rainbow. Oh, Oh, I'm not supposed to kill everyone in a flood. Yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. Verse 18. The whole earth was populated from Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And their wives, I suppose. (laughs) They had a little something to do with it. The vessels. Yeah. Noah planted the first vineyard. He made wine, got drunk, and lay naked in his tent. (laughs) And then Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father Noah naked and told his brothers about it. Ham's brothers, Shem and Japheth, took a garment and covered their naked father, walking backwards and not looking at his nakedness. Okay. That's That's a pretty good trick, huh? (laughs) I don't see you. (laughs) Yeah. When Noah sobered up, he knew what his younger son had done to him. Okay, that I don't get. Oh, because he was covered up now and he wasn't covered up before? I don't know how he'd have any idea what was It could have been any of them. And what was done to him? Is a big question. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and we're not going to deal with that here? We have a whole other episode on that. We have another episode on that. (laughs) <laughs> There's a lot of controversy about what did he do? Did he just see him naked or was there more to it than that? Yeah. And it's weird. They know it wakes up the next morning, I guess. Yeah. And knows what his son had done. How would he know? He, he dreamt drunk. about it, maybe. He was passed out drunk, right? How yeah. would he know? <laughs> Verse 25. And he said, so this is Noah talking. Yes. 
Cursed is Canaan. He will be a slave of slaves to his brothers. This is not very clear. He's talking about Canaan. That's his grandson. So he's cursing his grandson Mm -hmm. because his son saw him naked, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, as grandfathers tend to do. Does that make any sense? And he's cursing him, saying, you're going to be a slave to your brothers. And the implication here is it's not just Canaan that's going to be a slave, but Canaan and all of his descendants, the Canaanites. Yeah. One of the reasons for this story is to come up with the idea, hey, how come the Canaanites are such awful people? And how come we have to enslave them? Or and mistreat them. And yeah. Mistreat them. Well, you see. This is why. Yeah. There's the story. You know, because Ham saw his dad naked. It yeah. makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times those stories, from whatever culture they are, a lot of times those stories don't make sense. It's a silly story to say, well, this is where it came from. Yeah. Uh-huh. We now know the root of the, of the Canaanites. Yeah, I think that's the whole point of the story. Okay. But it also, this curse of Canaan. Remember we had the, yes. the mark on Cain. The mark on Cain and the curse of Canaan are often used in the same way, to justify both racism toward black people and their enslavement. Uh This is made explicit by Joseph Smith in the Pearl of Great Price, and it's a part of Mormon doctrine, eventually sort of reversed in 1978. It's still there in their scripture. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So verse 28, Noah lived 350 years after the flood. And he died when he was 950 years old. Yeah, of course he did. (laughs) (laughs) Verse 10. Uh, Chapter 10. Chapter 10. Actually, there's nothing in chapter 10. Yeah, I'm leaving it all out. (laughs) Remember, I promised I wouldn't be doing too many genealogies. Oh, yeah. And that's all it is. That's all it is. It's the genealogy of Noah's three sons. Oh, because together they had, I don't know how many kids they had, but all their descendants would be... Numerous. Yeah. There are a few things in here that I just want to point out. And one of them talks about their languages, each according to their languages, when it's talking about descendants of Noah's sons. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear that in chapter 10, we have many languages. Yeah. And yet we're going to see that in chapter 11, why it doesn't make sense. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Another thing I just want to mention is that Nimrod is in this genealogy. Uh-huh. Nimrod. <laughs> You've heard of Nimrod. I've called. Yeah, sometimes you, people call each other Nimrods. Like if you want to say that it, Nimrod. Somebody's not very smart. Yeah. And Nimrod in chapter 10, mm-hmm. he's called a mighty hunter before the Lord. Hmm. And he's thought to be the king that's going to make the Tower of Babel, which is our next Story. chapter. Yeah. Okay. Chapter 11. Before the Tower of Babel was constructed... All humans spoke the same language. Yeah, you see, so that's the problem. Is In chapter 10, they were all speaking different languages. In chapter 11, it says they all spoke the same language until, mm. until uh, the Tower of Babel. At this time, everyone on earth traveled to the plain of Shinar and lived there. They said to each other, Let's get some brick and slime and build a tower that reaches to heaven. We need to make ourselves famous so we aren't scattered all over the face of the earth. Yeah, that's a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things here. One is that they all spoke the same language, which mm-hmm. the previous chapter said they didn't. Mm-hmm. The other thing is that everyone on earth came to the plain of Shinar to build this tower. Boy, that one must have been hard to manage, getting yeah. all, everyone on earth to come to that place. You know, like <laughs> they came from Australia. They came from just everywhere, then North America. <laughs> Timbuktu. Yep. They did it to build a tower to heaven that reaches all the way up to heaven. What a oh, great they're, idea. They're trying to be gods. The interesting thing here is that they were going to build a tower to heaven. The next verse says, God came down to see the tower that the people had built. And he said, these people are unified and have one language. If they can build a tower, they can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> So God's afraid they're going to be able to build the tower up to heaven. Uh And if they can do that, they can do anything. That is a crazy thought. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go down and confuse their speech so they can't understand each other. So this is another story. Just like, why do we hate the Canaanites so much? Well, (laughs) you know, 
Yeah. <laughs> the curse. <laughs> yeah, no, I got drunk. and blah. So there was that story, and now we've got a story as to where languages come from, because everyone wants to know where languages came from. Uh-huh. Yeah. And remember how God was worried Adam and Eve might eat from the tree of life and live forever yes. and be like gods? Yes. He was afraid, so he had to kick them out of the garden. Now, in chapter 11, we have the Tower of Babel, and God's really worried that they're going to be able to do it. So I and guess he can't have that happen. I guess there are a couple ways of being like God. Either eating from the tree of life uh-huh. or building a tower yeah. to, the, to heaven. I wonder how God feels about flying to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably right. didn't like that. Yeah. Getting closer and closer to yeah. him. So verse 8. So God confounded the language of the people who were building the tower and scattered them all over the face of the earth. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> The last part of chapter 11, I'm going to leave out as well. That's another genealogy, and that's going to be a genealogy from Shem. Remember, Shem was one of Noah's sons? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a descendant of Shem is Abraham. So it gives you that whole genealogy from Shem to Abraham. Oh, continuity. Yeah, and this is also where the word Semite comes from. Oh, Shemite. Yeah, it's from a descendant of Shem is a Semite. Hmm. Yeah. You know, some people might want to know how long it was from the flood to Abraham. Oh, yeah. I'd said before that you can tell how long it was from the creation until the flood. I think it was 1,628 years. Yep. Now, from these genealogies, we can see how long it took from the flood to Abraham. So people who say that genealogies are useless are wrong. That's right. Yeah, that's how Bishop Usher managed to get his number. Of course, there's some tough places in there, but <laughs> discrepancies if here. If you want, to, yeah, but if you want to get to Abraham, uh-huh. you can do it. From Adam to Abraham is pretty clear, because from Adam, we know how long it is from Adam to the flood, mm-hmm. and then we know how long it is from the flood to Abraham, and that turns out to be until the birth of Abraham, two hundred and ninety-two years. Two hundred and ninety-two years. Yeah, and it the flood doesn't seem like very much. Yeah, well. They're still living kind of long. <laughs> There's a lot of generations here that I'm leaving out. There's, oh, okay. Most of the uh, fathers are having usual lifespans because, remember, God shortened it after oh, the flood. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So there's nine generations or something, and you end up with this 290 yes. years. And so the flood is usually thought of as being around 2400 BCE. Mm-hmm. So Abraham would show up, what, 300 years later? We'll see that he lives a long life. So it's like Abraham is living around 2000 BCE, just to give us an idea of where we are. Okay. Hey, thanks so much, Steve. Sure. And listeners, thanks for staying with us. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.